Who is the greatest controller maker? We've been debating, comparing Nintendo's, Microsoft's, and Sony's history. And based on innovation, consistency, and style, we're going to declare who has won the controller war and can be declared the greatest controller maker of all time. Up to now, of course. Nintendo really hit the ground running with its simple and elegant NES controller in 83, allowed players to simulate the arcade experience at home with the NES Advantage, and really got things moving with its ABXY SNES gamepad in 1990. The N64's controller was not well liked overall as it required three hands to handle properly, and its analog hurt the thumb, but without struggle, there is no progress. The GameCube's controller fit hands like a glove, and the later released wireless Wavebird has a cult following. The Wii Nunchuck was so desirable it caused madness at retail stores, the slick Wii U provides some double screen fun, and the Switch's Joy-Con is quite revolutionary in its versatility, and the Switch Pro is great for those of you not gaming on the go and maybe looking for your black belt in Super Smash Bros. Nintendo switches up its button layout and tries new things for every console. Of the big three major console and controller makers, Microsoft is the latest and richest player in the game and its controllers have varied in size but not too much in style. The original Xbox's fatty was great for big-handed players, and was so big, heavy, and dense you could do some serious damage with it. The revamped S was less obnoxiously large and more user-friendly, the 360 has less unwanted buttons, and they really just smoothed out what they had, and added connectors for things like chat pads on the bottom and headsets on top. They could also be used for PCs. Pretty cool. Xbox One's controller didn't reinvent anything, but was a sleeker, better performing, and more versatile version of itself with haptic feedback available in the triggers. The Elite Wireless Series 1 and 2 controllers are the pro versions of the Xbox One's gamepad, as you can customize button and trigger sensitivity with it like never before. These features have been integrated into the base Series X controller. In short, the Xbox's controller sculpting has smoothed out over the years, but the design has remained relatively conservative. They capitalize on what works and what's been working and have been, and probably will be, continuing to sail on with their tried, tested, and true design. After its fallout with Nintendo, Sony unveiled its iconic circle, cross, square, and triangle layout controller for the PS1. It later came out with its dual analog controller, which could rumble. When 98 rolled around, the DualShock was released for the PS2 with its good vibrations. 2000 brought the DualShock 2 with a little bit of pressure sensitivity. 05 brought out the PS3's DualShock 3 to the delight of those who doubted the boomerang prototype. 06 gave us the 6-axis for that wire-free motion control. 2010 the motion controller. Sony's reaction to the Wii, then 2013 brought us the PS4's DualShock 4 with its touchpad and share button. 2020, for all its infamy, brought us Sony's most innovative controller yet, the DualSense. Probably the most desired controller out there right now because of its haptic feedback capabilities. Sony's quality and consistency have remained fairly high over the last 27 years, and its style has only incrementally changed up until last year as it's finally taking risks. And no risk, no reward, right? Before we announce our champ, we want to give honorable mention to the Sega Genesis 6 button arcade pad controller, the best controller for Sega's glorious fighting games. The Google Stadia Cloud Connected controller, which was ambitious in its attempt to make a controller that executes its functions on the server over Wi-Fi, but in its execution, ain't so great, maybe a few gens from now, and the Magnavox Odyssey's paddle. The 1972 great-grandfather of home consoles, which used knobs to move horizontally and vertically in its closed circuit exotic playgrounds. This pre-Atari dinosaur of a controller paved the way for our contenders and winner. The choice comes down to taste, and taste is as personal as food. It's time for supper. And this gamer crowns Nintendo as the controller war winner. They've laid down the rainbow road for innovation and have been the industry trendsetter since the beginning. Although it looks like Sony and Microsoft have the potential to have better controllers on the way as their next-gen consoles are more advanced, for now, the House of Mario is the war pig whose flag flies the highest in the battle for controller supremacy. Who do you think has made the best controller since the dawn of the console? Is it the one from the system you have? From the one you want? Let us know in the comments down below, and like and subscribe for more from the gamer. See you in another life!